from the east coast the united states good morning and from where you are good afternoon everyone i'm sorry i couldn't be with you in person uh but as roderick explained in his opening remarks we had a catastrophic hardware failure in one of our critical boxes and i am waiting for a fedex delivery of a new motherboard as we speak so i'm kind of marooned where i am in the meantime but through the miracle of modern technology uh, at least i can still speak so let's dive right in um i assume we have the uh, the title slide on the on the screen what's next for arca os 5.1 mm -hmm. um so what I want to do in this discussion is talk about some of the things that are um, just about to be released with the, the 511 release and then what we're looking at doing later on in the 51 release cycle. So let's go to our next slide. Uh, just a refresher. Um, when we talk about major releases, minor releases, and maintenance releases, major release is five. Our current minor release is one. And we're currently on 510, so 511 will essentially be our first maintenance release to the 51 um, line. Next slide, please. Um, we are not going to be abandoning support for 5.0. There are people who are still using 5.0. A number of our commercial uh, clients are using 5.0. Uh, don't expect new features to be added to 5.0. Um, none of that is planned, but if we find a critical issue um, that would preclude perhaps installing 5.0 on something where it should be installed, that would require a new ISO build, we are not averse to a 5.0.9 release or something like that. Um, 5.1, of course, is our current line, and we will continue the 5.1 line for some time. 5.1.1 and then 5.2 will follow that. I don't know how many 5.1 releases we will have. Um, ultimately, we will get to a 5.2 release. When we get to 5.2, we may stop... Um, spinning new ISOs for 5.0. I mean, that's quite a ways off yet. Uh, another year or two, perhaps. So we'll see what happens with 5.0. But in the meantime, if you want new licenses for 5.0, the only new licenses that, that are available are commercial licenses for customers who are already running 5.0. If you're a new uh, personal license user just coming to ARCA OS, 510 is what will be available to you. If you're a new commercial customer coming to ARCA OS, uh, let's say you've been running um, uh, Warp 3 since back in the day, never went to Warp 4, and all of a sudden those uh, PCAT systems are no longer able to boot and you can't get new hardware but you have a mission critical application that runs on OS2 and you come to us and say please help us uh, you will start with 510 commercial uh, the, as I say the only 5.0 licenses that are available for new purchase are for commercial customers who already have at least one 5.0 license in place. And that's really a convenience for them so that they can stay on the same platform. Next slide. As I said, 5.1, uh, 
the plan uh, is to continue with 511. Um, it is in its final stages. Uh, surely 511, when it's released, will have an English release. Uh, German, Spanish, and Russian are very likely to be released with 511. Uh, in fact, one of the main holdups to the 511 release, not the only holdup, but one of the main holdups is we are polishing off some of the, the work on German. Um, we don't want to disappoint our German fans. Uh, 512 and beyond, of course, will be additional fixes as required uh, if we find something with the installer. I mean, generally, a new ISO is required if there's an installer issue that needs to be addressed because that's not something that you would, ins that you would apply after the installation is complete. So we'll see what happens as we go forward with with five one uh, when when the next maintenance release comes out and what's in it. Next slide, please. Main points of five one one. So we want to provide us we want to improve our support for current hardware. Uh, we are making great strides in that regard right now. Next slide. Uh, GPT capability enhancements in the installation volume manager. Installation volume manager was essentially retrofitted with support for managing our GPT volumes. GPT volumes in ARCA OS 5.1 are handled through um, a filter driver and uh, Instead of us rewriting the installation volume manager from scratch, we sort of bolted on the support for managing those GPT volumes. And um, it's a process. We're, we're getting there. We found some uh, glitches along the way, and we are addressing those in this 511 release. And again, because we use the installation volume manager, it, during installation, we need to address those with a new ISO release. Next slide. Obviously, as with all of our maintenance releases, you'll get the latest driver, installer, and utility updates available, so you won't have to download and apply those uh, drivers and uh, utilities after the fact. Next slide. Font scalability, um, Alex has been working very hard. He's been working in concert with um, Rich Walsh on implementing the font scalability. Um, this allows you to easily set your, your font and icon scale to match the resolution of your display. Um, when IBM left off with, with Warp 4.52, we didn't have displays at the resolution we have today. So we have new font sizes available so that your fonts don't disappear on the screen. And um, likewise, if you're using a really small, uh, if you're using a really low resolution, um, you can blow thing, uh, uh, squeeze things down so that uh, you can make the most use of your um, screen, available screen real estate. Next slide. So everyone wants to know about hardware support, particularly Wi-Fi drivers, right? Everyone wants Wi-Fi. Well, we have to prioritize what our hardware support is going to be. And obviously, if you can't boot the system, whether you've got Wi-Fi or not, doesn't really matter. So our current focus is on booting the system on more modern machines. Yes, Wi-Fi is still in development, and other hardware technologies are in development, but mainly it's support for some of these newer machines that are set up quite differently than what OS2 expects. 
and therefore what ARCA OS might expect. Next slide, please. As I say, these uh, latest systems are shipping without 8042 controllers, 6250, uh, 8254 timers, um, and so on. And as we encounter these systems, we have to make adjustments for software in OS2 that expects those components to be there and then tries to talk to them and when they when it does when the components don't get a response bad things happen so we are working to address issues like that next slide I mentioned UEFI before. Well, I mentioned I mentioned GPT, and, and really we've been we've been talking about modern systems that are uh, using extensible firmware. So ANCS, Arcanoe Compatibility System, uh, gave us the ability to boot on many of these new systems, but that's a very simplistic view of the problem. It's not just the extensible firmware interface that is difficult for OS2 to, to handle. It's, as I say, lack of expected hardware being present uh, on the machine. And we are working to address, uh, address those issues uh, in, in the software as best we can. Next slide, please. So I mentioned GPT earlier with regard to the installation volume manager. This is entirely new ground for OS2. OS2 has traditionally been um, an MBR, um, master boot record, uh, traditional partition table uh, operating system. So GPT is our GPT handling is sort of a way of allowing us to make a GPT partition look like an MBR drive uh, with a single partition to ARCA OS. Next slide, please. We use the uh, installation volume manager to create these GPT, uh, these usable GPT filtered partitions. And as I say, uh, it's a work in progress. And as we encounter situations where the installation volume manager falls short of handling them, we have to tweak it. And as I say, because it is an installation tool, that requires a new ISO for us. Next slide, please. David has been working really hard with um, getting a mouse to a much more usable state. Um, I can even use it on ThinkPads now, and it uh, it behaves normally. Um, it doesn't uh, object to my track point, and pressing the middle mouse button doesn't make the mouse do weird things. Uh, and it is much more um, fluid to use. So a mouse is becoming the the real standard uh, mouse driver for us. I, I don't really, whereas uh, our previous recommendation was to use the IBM single mouse driver for ThinkPad systems, uh, we no longer uh, hold to that, uh, or we will no longer hold to that recommendation when 511 comes out because a mouse 4 handles uh, those devices very well. Next slide, please. Uh, the USB A6 driver um, for network dongles, uh, you know, for, for those USB network uh, adapters uh, has been fixed and it now actually works. You can connect to ethernet using one of those devices. Next slide, please. 
And although the USB stack is considered to be mature, um, there are minor tweaks and enhancements that are still going on uh, to improve the USB experience. Next slide. USB stick creation in Arc for the Arc OS installer has been uh, improved uh, in 5.1.1, so that whole experience should work better for people. That is, I'm specifically talking here about the um, the OS2 based stick creation and not the image based stick creation that one would use if there were no ARCA OS or OS2 system available. Um, that, that process remains the same. But if you have an, ARCA, an existing ARCA OS system and you want to create a 5.1.1 installation boot stick, that process is much, much better now than uh, it has been before. Next slide, please. Installation volume manager, as I've mentioned, um, with improvements for handling GPT volumes. Next slide. Um, various applications, uh, minor issues, things that that might uh, that we might offer as a a download so that you could apply them to an existing 5.1.0 or even a 5.0 installation if applicable to 5.0 uh, would be will be bundled in the 5.1.1 release so that you won't have to download those separately. Next slide. I know that Greg talked about his work on the multimedia classes. Um, we are testing his latest build of this now and we are planning to release the updated um, classes in 5.1.1. Uh, they address a number of things, uh, including the ability to uh, handle digital transfers. Uh, that, I believe, was um, Lars's work uh, some time ago that will now be uh, incorporated in the ARCA OS release. So if you've got a, a, a DVD drive that was made in the last 20 years, it'll actually work to play audio uh, discs. Next slide, please. Python 3 is now part of the installation. Uh, even when you upgrade an existing system that's running 5.1, uh, it the Python 3 upgrade process is a little bit painful, and we have worked very hard to take the um, discomfort out of that. Next slide, please. And there are a few more updates to various components that would not be separately available for download, but are considered part of the, the base ARCA OS distribution. Those will be in there as well. Next slide. We talked about font scalability before. I, again, um, high resolution displays are really are the, the key here, those retina displays. I mean, things just disappear on them. Now we can scale things up, and you don't have to tweak five different things in, in 20 different places to make that happen. Uh, next slide. X Workplace actually is key to all of this because the font scalability management is done in uh, X Workplace or Arca OS desktop that allows for things to just fit the screen. Next slide. The ongoing work is really with the desktop apps that need to be made aware of these changes. So sometimes dialogues don't scale properly when you change the font sizes. Um, sometimes you'll find an application that has got hard-coded fonts in it. Uh, and there we have to do what we can to uh, replace those hard-coded fonts. Uh, it's a process. There's a lot of retrofitting that needs to, to go on. Next slide, please. 
we will continue through the process after don't expect that 511 is going to be the extent of our um, font scalability um, but it will be a major first step uh, in easing the user experience next slide going forward after 511 um, some of the things that, that we're looking at doing, um, as we know, we have a Samba 4 client, but our server is still at Samba 3 level. We want to bring that up to Samba 4. One of the holdups there has been whether we provide GUI tools with the server or we don't provide GUI tools with the server. Um, you can continue to use the... Um, simple Samba Configuration Center with Samba 4, uh, although the Samba 4 installation is not, um, Samba 4 server installation is not part of that package installation. So it's a bit of a, a hack <clears throat> to make that work. I don't know that we want to go that route. Uh, I don't know that we want to rewrite uh, the GUI tools. Um, we'll see we'll see that's it's still up for grabs but expect that sometime during the 511 five one release cycle we will get a Samba 4 server printer manager um, yeah setting up printers is still um, a bit of a pain um, is it a, a, a traditional presentation printer is it um, a cups printer uh, I can't find the driver for my CUPS printer. Uh, why do I have all these different print management tools? What we would like is a unified printer manager. It's on the list, we just haven't gotten there yet. The desktop notebook background page has really suffered for a long time. I mean, it is... Um, we inherited it from, from Warp 4.5, um, and it really needs to be redone, and that's something that we're looking at. So, and it would bring um, capabilities like um, ENG desktop backgrounds. Um, it would bring um, time desktop background changes, uh, things like that other features that, that aren't there now, and it would do away with issues like duplicated uh, images in the drop-down list and um, things like that. Uh, David's working on an MMIGC driver for uh, another family of Intel NICs. Uh, this family of Intel NICs includes um, some 2.5 gigabit devices. Um, not that 2.5 gigabit by itself is an issue. It's just a matter of supporting the chipset. So he's working on that now. He's also he's also working on uh, a new uh, USB AXGE driver for the A688179 chips, which are um, USB dongles and mostly gigabit connection dongles. So they're more useful for um, modern networking. And that, as I say, that's currently in development. Next slide, please. The new VNC server and viewer, uh, that's likely going to be in 511. Um, that's uh, from Andre Vasilkin, and uh, it is a, a fabulous VNC client and server. It's very functional and um, it's a vast improvement over the one that we have right now that's based on real VNC. Um, so that will probably be in 511. We'll have to see what uh, what happens. Improved iNet config settings. Um, most of us are aware that the networking stack in OS2 is quite robust, but it was tuned for networks 
uh, and um, remote connectivity as it existed in the 1990s. Um, so settings that you would use over a dial-up uh, connection are really no longer relevant to the way we use our systems today. And I, now I see everyone again. Nice to see everyone's smiling face. Everyone's still awake. That's all good. Um, so we're looking at improving the INAC config settings out of the box so that the user will, will need to do less, hi Howard, uh, need to do less um, tweaking after the install. Um, we'd like to provide a system-wide squid proxy that's switchable by the, by the uh, user. Uh, switchable meaning you can turn it on and off. Uh, and chained to Privoxy, um, hopefully with a configuration GUI because both of them are rather involved in their, their setups. I use a chain squid and privoxy setup uh, on my own system, which is one of the reasons why I don't have as much pain using an older browser on the net because my squid handles a lot of that stuff for me. Um, but it's a safer way to browse the net and it's one of the things that's on my personal um, to-do list is to set that set that up and bundle that into the system somehow. Um, David is currently in the design phase of um, updating clock01.sys so that those systems where we have no access to the high resolution timer um, we can we can finally use. Um, and support for touchpad devices using the I2C bus. Now the I2C bus is really interesting. It's been around for a long time, um, but we have no native support for it. So, um, the, and there's a whole class of input devices, mainly touchpads, that in modern laptops that use the I2C bus. So on those systems, right now, there's no trackpad support. You have to use an external USB input device. Um, so David is looking at um, solutions for that problem. Next slide, please. Obviously, Wi-Fi drivers, um, we know, we hear it from everyone. No one wants to carry a travel router around. I know it's an extra dongle that when you've got a, a networking, a, a wireless networking card in the machine, why should you carry an extra dongle? Well, the extra dongle is a workaround for the problem. As long as a workaround exists and there are higher priorities on our list, we are going to focus on those higher priorities, such as getting the machine to boot. But um, we do plan to get some wireless drivers out there and available for modern chips. Uh, QT6 based browser, again, we need a modern browser. Uh, we've reached essentially the end of the line with Firefox and SeaMonkey. Um, Double is a step along that, that path. Um, I don't know that it's the be all and end all of browsers, but QT6 seems to be um, the driving force behind whatever browser we, um, we get. Um, so that's uh, a consideration. We're not in the browser building business. We have had high hopes that the QT browser development would um, mature to the point where we could bundle one of those offerings like Double in with Arca OS. Uh, so far, that has not quite 
materialized. So we'll see whether we need to get involved in it. DT Audio, which was formerly DTA, uh, which allows for um, audio from WinOS 2 and um, DOS sessions, um, we plan to incorporate into the system at some point so that um, WinOS 2 and DOS applications will be able to play right through the UniAud uh, de connected device. Um, so that's, again, on the, on the board, uh, not getting a lot of attention right now, but it will. Now that we have uh, solid support for DOS and WinOS 2 sessions again, these things are, are bubbling up to the surface. The retro gaming release, somewhere along the 5.1 release cycle, we plan to have a retro gaming focused release. I don't know whether that's going to be 5.1.2, 5.1.3, 5.1.4, but somewhere along there, we really do intend to make a push into the retro gaming uh, vertical market. Um, there are a lot of kids who never had a chance to run uh, DOS on systems back in the day uh, that are discovering these things. And it is a vast open market. And we happen to have the last standing modern operating system on the planet with the capability of running DOS and Win 16. So it makes perfect sense for us to explore that market by providing good support for those um, for those games. Um, we'll see where that goes, but it is in the roadmap for 5.1. Next slide, please. Just some minor points about updating versus upgrading. Um, updates are always included with support and maintenance. If you've got a current support and maintenance subscription, um, you are you have the ability to download the latest ISO and update your uh, system to that latest ISO for your major and minor release. Upgrade. So going from one minor release to the next minor release is a discounted purchase. So it's an upgrade to go from 5.0. something to 5.1. something. If you've already made that that purchase, then you no longer have if you've already made an, an upgrade purchase of your 5.0 license to a 5.1 license you no longer have access to your 5.0 ISO downloads because you no longer have a 5.0 license. You now have a 5.1 license. You'll have access to all the 5.1 uh, ISOs that we provide and updates for 5.1, but not for 5.0. Uh, if you have multiple licenses and you upgrade one of them to 5.1, then you'll have access to 5.0 updates and 5.1 updates. Uh, we will continue, as I've said before, to provide updates for 5.0 uh, as required. Where there are uh, post-release uh, or interim release um, updates available that are applicable to 5.0 and 5.1. They will be available for both um, channels. Um, where there are only updates that are applicable to one or the other, they will appear in the correct uh, update channel. So if we replaced a component from 5.0, with a different one in 5.1, and there's an update for that older component, if you have a 5.1 license, you won't see the update for that 5.0 uh, era component. 
And likewise, updates for 5.1 content will not be available for 5.0 uh, licensees. Next slide, please. We are at the point in the presentation where I'm here to take your questions. Hi, Lewis. Keith here. Hi, Keith. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, you mentioned Python. Yes. 5.1, an update. What do we use Python for? Well, um, that's a, a, a very good question. Well, one of the things you use Python 273 for is YUM. Okay. YUM is a Python application. Now, YUM does not use Python 3, but there are other applications that are available that use Python 3. I don't have a good example for you off the top of my head. Generally, where you... Um, let, me, let me organize my thoughts for a moment. Generally, you, if you're running any Python applications, you need an installation of Python 2 and an, ins an installation of Python 3. Otherwise, your Python 2 applications will not work because Python 3 is not backward compatible. It's a different ABI. And so, keeping the two of the two different Python versions on the system at one time is a little bit of a juggling act to get them to coexist. Um, but I don't have an example off the top of my head of a Python 3 application. I mean, we don't ship anything with Arca OS that is Python 3 dependent at this okay. point. But it's because it's such a pain in the neck to upgrade from Python 2.7, or I shouldn't say upgrade, to install Python 3 when Python 2.7 is still on the system. Um, it just made sense for us to add that as part of our upgrade process. Okay. Um, you mentioned Squid Proxy. What is Squid Proxy? I've never heard of it. Ah, okay. Squid is a caching web proxy. So the way a proxy server works, normally, without a proxy server, when you open up your web browser and you go to a URL, your web browser makes the request and it goes that request goes out to the internet to fetch that page. When you have a proxy, your web browser makes a request of the proxy. The proxy goes out to the web and fetches the page and feeds that back to the, your, your web browser or whatever other application you're using that is directing its traffic flow through the proxy doesn't have to just be um, port 80 or port 443 traffic. Um, so the, the proxy will do a number of things. It will uh, accelerate your web browsing by caching locally in the background for you while you're reading one page, other pages related to, to what you're viewing, and Proxies help keep you safe because they're able, uh, in some instances like Privoxy, they're able to anonymize your uh, connection. So they hide a lot of your, your, um, your data flow from um, outside sources. So it improves performance, it improves compatibility, because sometimes a response would come back to, say, SeaMonkey that SeaMonkey doesn't understand, whereas Squid will understand that and then relay the information to SeaMonkey in a format that SeaMonkey can render for you. So it makes your browser more compatible with uh, the, the later web technologies. Um, so that's essentially what, what the Squid proxy does. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. I've got another one, yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, as a programmer, 
you were talking, you or first of all, you were talking about rescalable fonts and everything and dialogues. Mm -hmm. As a programmer, how can I um, become aware of the technology I need to put in my programs so that that will work? Ah, okay, excellent, excellent question. Watch our wiki, and I am confident that Alex will post something to it to assist developers in just those those changes. Okay. Um, so yeah, watch watch the wiki. It it's. It, you know they're they're not really um, if you're starting from scratch working on something it's not really all that difficult it becomes more complicated when you've got to go back and, and rework something that you you did um, five or ten years ago but watch the wiki and you should you should get some good directions there it's thank you there's also another, Alex gave a couple of hints last year in Phoenix in his presentation about what general hints you should look at to make certain that your dialogues in your PM program are designed properly. He gave a couple of rough outlines in his presentation that's applied. So I, I will look at that. Look at that. Yeah, if you go to the, the Warp you. Events um, YouTube channel, you can find uh, Alex's presentation from last year. Hi, Lewis. Um, a question I had actually from a client: If you are mm -hmm. running subscription um, subscription, and you go to the website and request an ISO, do you get a rebuild of what you had originally, or do you get all the updates included? You get the late. If you have a current subscription and you request a new ISO, you get the latest ISO for your support and maintenance level. So if you originally purchased 5.0.3 and you haven't downloaded a new ISO in all this time, but you've maintained your support subscription, when you log in and you request a new 5.0 ISO, you get a 5.0.8 ISO. Okay, and as a follow-up, if you find yeah. that that messes something up, is there a way of back-leveling? Um, no, and that's that's where the the need for good backups comes in. Okay. Uh, Sandra Asher here, and um, we've seen uh, there are very very few Germans in this room, even if we are in Germany for this event. Um, and I think uh, we have lost a lot of uh, people because of the delay of uh, the national language version. Mm -hmm. so I really we hope that we can get it out soon. soon. And uh, I'll offer my help for, for translation or checking translations if it fits on screen or if it has other issues like a duplicate or accessorize uh, key uh, in it uh, or the things uh, or, makes, or, or uh, if it makes sense or in other words I can check uh, if the text goes too long and does not fit into the window so uh, can uh, try to shorten it uh, so uh, I think it uh, can help uh, with that issue, the issue or some of these issues Okay, I, I, I greatly appreciate that. I greatly appreciate that. I mean, we are we are really down to the last few pieces in in German that that need to be polished. In my um, presentation tomorrow about um, national language versions, you'll get a bit of. A taste as to what's what's been taking the time with this stuff. Um, we're really we're really very close, but um, it's you know just getting that last 
that last little bit over the line so that we don't embarrass ourselves with a release that's um, amateurish looking. That's that's really the thing that we that we need to to avoid. It's got to look professional, and we're just about there. It's we're close. We're very close. Okay, I'll see uh, tomorrow. What's there still left, or what can be done in further steps, which are not that critical for uh, the moment? to further polish it in subsequent releases. I think we need to get uh, these NLS for German and other uh, languages also uh, out because otherwise we lose those few people who are uh, left using Arcaroys or other thing. And that's uh, what we said. <laughs> Point taken. Yes. Point taken. Yes. And it probably, I don't know how uh, big the group is of translators. You know, probably we need a few more people uh, to even check and test it because sometimes one bug happens only in a specific NLS. I think, uh, Keith, you uh, showed uh, in the last. Cologne meeting one and a half years ago, a German version and an English version of uh, a better of 5.1 or before that step, and uh, the font size uh, changing in the English version worked, in the German version for the, uh, for the, uh, the command line sessions uh, selecting the fonts usually crashed the system. You, you will probably not notice it because not everyone tests every uh, component, even if uh, much of the stuff is translated. So it probably extend a few more uh, testers so that not only a one or two persons uh, who do the translation uh, also test it. <laughs> Just as sure. Question. Good points. Good points. All. Oh, thank you, Sa Sandra. It seems that was it, so uh, thank you for dialing in. <laughs> no other questions then? No? Okay. Thank you. We'll see you All tomorrow. Right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it.